Hey guys, you're watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and today we've got a special treat here. I've got a guest host for today's show. I've got Jay Clark with Dunlop here, and he's gonna take some of the mystery out of dirt bike tire changes. I know that a lot of you guys have struggled in the past. This is something that I've struggled with a lot as I've kind of come up in dirt bikes and there was a time there where I couldn't get a tire change without pinching and ruining my tube and it, it was super frustrating but I think if you got the proper tools and you've got you've got some technique involved you can really take some of the mystery out of it and Jay changes a lot of tires a lot more tires than than I've ever done Jay's forgotten more about tire changing than I've ever known so I thought I'd bring him in and we'll see how to uh, put some new skins on this dirt bike. So let's get to it. Well, Jay, go ahead and uh, take it away here. Tell okay. us what we need to know. Well, first off, we're working on an 18 inch wheel, which is a little bit easier. So for all you off-road guys, um, it's a little bit easier than a 19 inch rear wheel. So what I start with is the rim lock. I'll back it all the way off. I leave just a couple threads. And on these KTMs, it's a little harder to see where that ends, but about like so. I'll just back it off to where there's just a thread or two holding the nut on. Take the cap off your valve stem here and then the valve core inside, we remove it completely. Some people just let air out. You don't want to do that. You want to get it all the way out. Now, why is it easier on an, eight, on an 18 inch wheel? Is it just because you've got more, more, or, more sidewall here? So it's okay. thicker, a whole lot easier to where the, the 19 is a lower profile tire. So, so it can be a lot harder. So I'll start just a little ways away from the rim lock. I'll get in here and push down on the tire like so. You're about six to eight inches away from the rim line. Yeah, just, I'm, I'm now I'm knocking it off the bead. Now we're all the way off. Now some, and some people will just push their hands down. It can be hard on your hands. So now I get down and I push the rim lock and now I'll fill the tire over. And we're using Motion Pro tire spoons as you see here. Again, I just get a, a little ways away from the rim lock. And, and instead of going right here in between the knob, I go kind of right on the knob. On the and that'll push, make it a little easier. And this one come off the bead pretty easy, being an 18 inch. And now at this point, I'm gonna start about, about eight inches away. And I, I get the tire spoon in there and I pull it towards me and then lock it under the, under the disc. And I have the disc up for my first, that's why I start with the sprocket up on the other side. And I just pull that spoon out and I keep going like so. And if you start getting to where it's a little tight, you can push down on the bead on your opposite side. You want, you want to keep it down in, in, the, drop, in the drop center. Right? Yeah, and then just work my way around like so. And now I'm down to just where I just need one spoon. I got my left hand kind of keeping down on the tire. And so much of the stuff you do, you just kind of forget. So as I'm working here, I'm kind of trying to tell every step. So my tire's off this side. And at this point, a lot of people will pull the tube out of the tire. We don't even bother because it can be kind of a, a hassle so, and, and tough on your fingers. So we'll start here. I just picked up on the tire with my left hand and I got the spoon under the sprocket here. And I just work my way around just like I did the other side. And I'm kind of keeping my body against the tire. Brace it off there. Now I can be down to one, one spoon. And I push with my body against the tire. And now you see the rim lock and the valve stem are away. And then I just push it off like so completely. Now at this point, one of the first things I'll do is inspect that everything's good here. And this is a newer bike. So we're in good shape here. Everything's nice. But if you have a band here that's torn away or broken, you're, the spoke uh, nipples here will be exposed. You wanna cover those back up with tape. We use that Gorilla Tape, works really good, or duct tape, um, or, or duct a band. Tape there, huh? Yeah, duct tape right across this strip. Some people will have it up onto here. You don't wanna do that. You wanna be just the same distance. You see this blue tape right now. Okay. You don't, you don't wanna be up on here or the tire won't be able to, uh, to fit properly in here. So stay right in here, you know, pretty simple deal. So this one's all in good shape. Good time to inspect that. And we're ready to go with our new tire install. Good. So we got our new uh, Dunlop AT81. It's a good all around tire for trail riding. Um, is, this, is, this the best, is this the best tire that Dunlop makes for our area in the Western United States? Yeah, for, for most, across the entire country, really for roots and rocks. Now, 
it wear, will wear a bit quickly out here where it's rocky and all that, um, but it has tremendous grip. It works really well. So that's one downside of a tire that works well is it tends to wear out a little quicker. So there's a trade-off there. So with, the, with this tire, it works really well in those conditions. It's, it's a better tire for most off-road conditions than say our MX3S or MX52 as it's a better all-around tire. And so we throw a little baby powder inside this tire to keep the tube from chasing. We have a new... Chafing. Yeah, so what'll happen is that yeah, the tube and the tire will be kind of bond together if you leave it on for say a long time and then it'll also help prevent a little bit less uh, likely to have pinch flats as well, you know, with them not as bound together. So we stuff our tube in here and once we get our tube stuffed in here, we're going to add a little air. All right, perfect. Kyle's got us some air out of this nice cool blue hose so we're gonna and what i like to do is we fill this up like so now this is one of the most common questions we get is well, how much air do you put in it you put just the right amount it actually doesn't even register on a gauge um and so with an 18 you have a little bit of floppiness i actually get a so i, I get a little bit less And you're just trying to keep the tube uh, you know, firm so there's no folding around or anything. It's ready to go just like this. And this is how I start. So now with our tire, our, tu our tube in, we're ready to start. We have our, our nut for our valve stem. We have that ready. I actually stick that in my mouth of all places. Probably not a good, good habit to be in. But I got this tire paste. I'll put this on here. I'll tell you about this tire paste here as we go. So I get that on there real nice. And this just helps uh, to lubricate that. Yeah, and it doesn't stay wet. Um, like some guys will use WD-40 and stuff, and that can stay wet. And you don't want that if you're going, especially if you're going straight to ride. So we find our hole here in the rim, and then we drop our nut and put our nut on here. We put it on like three quarters of the way or so, like so. Now with this wheel, with the rim lock being right next to here, it makes it real easy. It's not opposite. So at this point, we just slide our, we see how we're, we watch the tube right here. It's really easy. You could pinch, you could get the tube in here. You're going to make sure your tube's on the other side of that rim lock, like so, like this, and you're ready to start putting the tire on. I think for the, the for the help of this video and showing guys how to do this, I'm going to kind of do it the hard way. And so right now I'll pull this off and I'm going to leave it off the rim lock. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend it's opposite, like on a Yamaha or um, about half the brands out there, the Hondas. You why, had, do they, why do they do that? Why do they have the rim lock? So, uh, so some bikes, the concept is if they have the, the stem here and the rim lock over here, that it's distributing the weight of the... Oh, so to, it's more balanced. More balanced. So when you see Kawasaki and KTM and some of their brands have them right next to each other, uh, I think we can all agree on a dirt bike. It's not that big a deal. One bent bend on one side or a clump of mud on the other side and your weight's all off anyway so i i kind of like this setup it's of course it's easier to change tires on so as i'm taking these bites all around i lift up underneath with my left hand here and i pop it on so now my rim lock is stuck underneath now and i'm just doing that for demonstration purposes since you show you guys kind of the hardest situation so now i'd flip the tire over now my rim lock stuck right there and I get a spoon and my motion's going to be like this, back and forth, back and forth. And I tap the rim lock and I walk it over the rim lock, push the rim lock up like so, flip it back over, and now I'm good to go. So I'll start, I pick up the tire with my leg, and now I've got a gap right here, just about five or six inches away from the stem. Now how far away to the rim, from the rim lock do you want to be? Usually I, I gauge it by the stem and I'll work and the valve stem will work my way around. So if the, I'm usually start about four inches away from here because this is one of the most common places people will pinch a tube, is close to the stem. So you, I don't ever want to end at the stem because the, the tube's pulled up higher right there. Yeah. So I'll start four or five inches away from there. Now I pushed up on the rim lock so it's in here. And you can see I'm pushing down with my left hand. And my, my bites are about two to three inches away. Now, when it gets closer... This is the hard part here. So, so right here, 
I, now I move over closer to my, my bead buddy and I'm knocking the tire off the bead. See how it just went down? Yeah, yeah, right here. All down. Now that's the biggest problem people have is just taking the time to go back and make sure it's all the way up. Now on a 19 inch wheel, this is even a little bit harder. Now I left me just enough to where I can slide in here without scratching my rim too bad. And I'm lifting up on the tire and I pop it in, push down on the tire. At the same time I can pull my bead buddy out. And now I'm gonna air it up. Um, obviously airing it up with a compressor is really good. I'm not having to use a bicycle pump or something. So we'll just pause. Okay, I'm gonna grab that rag. Okay, so, so now I filled it up on one side, I'm gonna wipe it off real good. Now I'm gonna flip it over, always make sure to flip it over and make sure you beat it on both sides. If you don't flip it over, uh, chances are then for, for whatever, you wanna beat it up on the other side. So you wanna make sure you're all the way Beat it up. What do you do? What do you do if you if it, if the bead hasn't popped up? Then you just put more air. More air. Now, if you get to a situation where, say, you didn't didn't use a good lube and it's real dry, then I would let the air back out of the t out of the tire, knock it off the bead, oh, okay. and try to drop something in there, some glass cleaner or something, and some get it wet, and then fill it back up with air with a good compressor with a bunch of air at one time so it can pop back up in there, and usually you're fine. So now the first thing we'll do is we'll tighten our our rim lock. Usually I have a little ratcheting cool wrench, but we gotta go a little old school make and do up here while I'm visiting Kyle. So, and, and you don't wanna over tighten the rim lock because you can bow out your rim. You know, the concept of the rim lock is it's holding the tire in place from spinning and under normal conditions. Is there any sort of torque spec setting? Yeah, I, I don't think so. We call it Armstrong and I'm not very strong, so it's, it's, it's uh, pretty good about in there. So if you get like that right there, you're good. Yeah, just one little vein. And then, and then here, one of, the, one of the common mistakes is people jam this nut. You could probably catch that with your, people will jam this nut down here. This is the most common mistake we see. So you see this nut down here? You don't ever want to do that because so if the tire runs low and this thing starts to turn, it'll rip the stem off of the tube. So what you want to do is back this all the way out here and run your cap down until it touches it. Got it. So that's a common, so you want to be something like put our cap on like so. But right now we're going to check tire pressure. We'll talk a little bit about, about tire pressure. Oh, we mentioned the tire paste. The tire paste I get is from Hunter Engineering, which is they sell it to uh, like at, you know, truck tire stops tire and shop. tire shops. Can you buy it online maybe? It, yeah, they're, they're an old school company and I have to meet up with a, oh. with a rep you know, and you get it in gallon buckets, it's like 30 bucks for a gallon. So for most people that lasts in their lifetime, it lasts me about a year, okay. a gallon bucket or so will last me like a year. And, uh, and you, and it's like 30 bucks for a one gallon and it's called Hunter engineering. It's probably the best stuff we found. There's some other stuff out there, but, uh, that's what we found works well. Now we're going to set this. Are you riding this bike today? Uh, probably won't ride this one today. All right, riding this one today. So we're going to set this one around 15. 15 is what I run around here. And one of the, so if you can get away with 13 to 14 off-road wise, you get a little better grip. Um, but you, of course you get a little more susceptible to, to pinch flats, but pinch flats on an 18 inch off-road bike are mainly going to be to guys that are going really fast and slamming into rocks. Um, which we do. I, yeah. I, I pinched them. Although, although it really does help if you can get, if you can get that heavy duty, that, that heavy duty tubes gonna make a big difference. So now I got my cap on there. Back to the nut, I set my tire pressure, and, and this wheel is good to go. Sweet. Now we just gotta do the front. It's, it's an easy deal. Yeah, well guys, Jay made this look so easy. Standing right here by him, it was pretty incredible to watch, and it's something that I think you've gotta, you've gotta practice with. I know I'm getting better, the, the more tires that I change, and I think practice makes perfect, but a lot, of those, a lot of those points that he was talking about, making sure to go back around you know, the other side, when you're, when you're getting, when it gets tight here and you're trying to spoon it on, it helps to take just a little bit extra time, go back around the other side and get everything back down. And man, that made, that looks slick. I think having a tire stand is critical. This is having you, the one you have is perfect as well. 
but having it at your waist height here and not be bent over a bucket or something or doing it on the ground, um, having it at your height here is and works I really nice. This, this stand had this stand is really easy to turn, so it's just got that nylon. I, I had there. a buddy of mine make this for me and put this nylon on there. I like this type of stand with a center post. Uh, it's quick and easy for me. Um, other guys like the ones that go around here and sit on the spokes. Which is kind of like, like this one from Rocky and, Mountain. And at least, at least this one has a, what I like about this one is it has a center post, so it can hold it like so. So this, this, this is a nice stand. Now you can see this stand is sitting up a little bit taller because Kyle's a little bit taller than me. Yeah. So uh, that does help. For mine's a little bit lower boy here and I can get over it more. I, I like being able to get over a little bit and um, so that's, you got to have the good now, tools. Now tell me this, so, so I noticed you're using the same spoons that I have, but I also have some of these more pointed ones for Motion Pro. What do you think of these? So uh, these are okay, I think, for a trail bag. I think these can be valuable. The downside to these is, especially this side, can, you can want to go in too far. And with this, this sharp lip like this one, you can gouge your rim real easy if you're not totally in there. Yeah. And you'll, you'll pop off the rim and put a nice little gouge in there, where with these, these, we call these spoons, these, you know, used to be called tire irons back right. in the day. And with, with this one, when it goes in, you kind of uh, get in the rim and you have less chance of putting a nice gouge in your, in your rim. And these fit in there nicely, so I tend to like these a lot better. Very good. Yeah. Helps down the right tool. Pretty simple, so let's knock that front out and go riding.